This meeting is being recorded. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to the Q4 and FY24 first earnings conference call of Case House India Limited. Today on the call from the management, we have with us Mr. Ratan Srivastav, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Manish Gurnani, Chief Technology Officer, and Mr. Umang Soni, Chief Financial Officer. As a disclaimer, I would like to inform all of you that this call may contain forward-looking statements, which may involve risk and uncertainty. Also a reminder that this call is being recorded. I would now request the management to briefly show us the presentation, talk about the business, performance highlights for the quarter that went plus, growth plans and visions for the coming year, post which we will open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Vinay <coughs> Thank you for making all the arrangements. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our investor conference call. We appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Before we go into the specifics, let me outline the agenda for our discussion. First, we will go for the company overview. Then we will go for the technology roadmap, then financial performance, and then question answer session. Well, uh, I aim to keep this call informative. Please feel free to raise any question or comments uh, you may have during the question answer session. Let's begin with the company overview. So uh, we have completed 12 years uh, of the services this year. 500 uh, total headcount we have crossed. 30 plus countries we have. And we have 150 plus happy clients. Revenue generated by repeat customers are more than 82%. <clears throat> and top five client contribution is the revenue uh, 33%. <clears throat> Financial year 23-24, uh, we have uh, revenue growth uh, 39% and PAT growth 38% year on year. The biggest milestone of uh, this year, I can say that we have crossed 100 plus crore revenue and 500 plus headcount in this year, financial year 24. CAGR 22-24, sales is 81% and net profit 168%. We have technology partners, uh, Adobe. We have done a partnership with the Red Hat. We have done partnership with the Udo. We have a partnership with the Salesforce. Uh, we have partners with, partnership with the AWS and in all this partnership, uh, I would say that the, the best partnership was this uh, Salesforce. Now we are a uh, platinum, uh, which is called uh, these days uh, Summit Salesforce partner. Uh, we are uh, certified from the Salesforce itself and in India, I can say that uh, there's very few uh, companies who have this uh, top partnership. Okay. And because of this top, top partnerships, uh, we are getting uh, so many uh, meeting invites from the Salesforce itself for the future planning. Udo, we have done uh, excellent business. And uh, yes, uh, I will cover other things in the next slides. Key achievements of quarter four and financial year 24 is... <clears throat> Uh, we have highest ever quarterly revenue in this quarter, 30 crore, 45 lakhs, 30.45 crore. And highest ever quarterly PAT, which is 9.40 CR. We have added a Fortune 500 uh, customer and he is into the telecom uh, domain. And uh, we have uh, several uh, business units. And in those business unit, we have one business unit, which is called Udo. And in this Udo, uh, we have a uh, hundred plus members. Uh, we have, uh, we have a uh, total count. Okay. And this Udo is growing very fast. Salesforce, I have already covered. Uh, the new thing is that, uh, AI ML center of excellence. We have uh, set up a center of, uh, excellence for the AI ML considering the future in generative AI. Okay, and then uh, for that thing, we have hired one uh, very senior person, 
uh, he has around 20 plus year experience and he will uh, lead this uh, uh, center of excellence. Okay. Now coming to the deals we won this year. We have uh, one, one, one deal, USA based automotive uh, heavyweight uh, sector. And a part of this, we have done one large Australian digital marketing firm. And uh, that firm is, uh, means, is into the digital marketing. And it's, this firm is the largest uh, digital marketing firm in the Australia. UK-based global commercial real estate service company, we won this customer. Data project with the distinguished uh, banking institute in the Middle East, that bank is the huge bank, means the largest bank, we can say that one of the largest bank. A part of this, uh, we have one, one uh, deal. Uh, this customer is the largest driving school in the Dubai. A part of this, increasing engagements, uh, we have done two new contracts with the uh, USA based shipping giant. A new order from the largest bank in UAE again in the big data. Next. Here we have a several awards. We have achieved several awards and achievement, but in this award, the most prestigious, I can say that uh, we won uh, Indian MSME of the year 2023 by Economics Times. Uh, we won uh, Great Companies SME Business Award 2022 under the Business Service uh, and Consulting category by Great Companies. Next. Now uh, here uh, you can uh, see that what are the pillars of outstanding performance of case halls. So lean cost st structure, swift turnaround, high quality delivery, client-centric approach, high customer retention, and definitely flexible and adaptive business model. These are the pillars of outstanding performance of KSOLS. Next. This is the complete uh, timeline, but I'm directly jumping into 2021. 2021, we listed on NSC. Uh, then tech partnership with the Salesforce, Magento, Udo. And then at the same year, we got uh, certified uh, of, for a semi-level three. And uh, this year, we have also done the renewal. Means uh, every th third year, you need to uh, go for the renewal and you need to again uh, submit all the paper and documents and each and everything. Then we uh, we have done that. Okay. And uh, then uh, we migrated to the main board of NSC and BSC and we got the partnership with the Red Hat I have already explained you Salesforce I explained and we have started this year a new office in Indore and Pune okay. now I'm coming to 23-24 achieve the Salesforce Platinum partner I have already explained and 100 crore and 500 this was the major milestone of this 23-24 next Clientele, top five customers, revenue from type, top five customers are 33%, revenue from top 10 customers are 50%, and here on the right side you can see some customers. Apart of these customers, we have several other good customers, but due to uh, non disclosure uh, agreement, we cannot disclose the name, but definitely uh, most of them are of uh, reputed company and they have a stable business. Next. Now I'm going to cover growth strategy. In the growth strategy, uh, the business blueprint, I can say that uh, we have uh, expert management and expert uh, technical team. We have diversified the business uh, in terms of the customer, in terms of the geographic means uh, we do not uh, depend on one country and we do not depend on one customer. So we have so many customers and so many technologies and so, and uh, also the multiple countries. Okay. And definitely we always uh, focus on the customer uh, satisfaction and because of this we get a uh, continuous work from the customer we get references from the customers 
Okay. So uh, these are the blueprint, business blueprint. Next. Business strategies. Definitely we are focusing on the efficiency. Uh, maximum utilization of resources. Expanding the current business relationship. Uh, for example, I, I and uh, management uh, people from the management team always try to meet customers to understand their requirement and to understand uh, if they have any other requirement in other technologies, okay, to showcase them that what we are doing, in, okay, and it helps us to lot, it, it helps us a lot to get a new business. We are also investing uh, in infrastructure and the technology as I always say that uh, we are working in the niche technology, so if we want to uh, Continuous, if we want to continuously work in the niche technology, then we need to continuously upgrade ourselves. So it, it, it requires lots of investment for the training and the uh, infrastructure and technology. Next. Uh, I have already covered most of the things because in this slide you can see that uh, Salesforce Platinum and then um, Center of Excellence and then appointment of 20 uh, plus uh, VP engineering. So we can go for the next slide. Growth drivers, uh, as I said that we always focus on the increasing the utilization resources or any other uh, uh, things. We always focus on the utilization, lean cost structure, then smart investment. For example, we are investing our time, money and resources in the AI ML considering the uh, future business, big data, Okay, we are doing the tech partnership. We are, uh, we are, we see, we, we have a partnership with the Red Hat, Red Hat, and I can see that, uh, in future, we may have a, we may have, uh, event some also with the partnership with the Red Hat. They, they have given this, uh, offer. Okay. And if, if everything goes well, then we may have a part, uh, event that and it will help us to uh, attract the other customers who are uh, looking, uh, who are looking for companies who have a capabilities of AI ML with OpenShift. So Red Hat uh, has a capability of the OpenShift and we have capabilities of the AI ML. So this is the, this is something which Red Hat, uh, Observed and they said that let's uh, uh, do something together. Okay, so I can say that the, part, the Red Hat and partnership with the uh, Salesforce uh, is going very fast. Okay, client relationship. I we have a very good client relationship. Okay, and the proof is that 82 percent revenue is coming from the repetitive uh, customer, and they are also growing very fast, and it is helping us. Uh, to increase the work uh, because our resources are, number of resources are continuously increasing because they are growing fast. Next. Uh, business generation strategies, as I said that partnership, multi-channel marketing, content marketing. So overall I can say that organic and inorganic both. This, this is the business generation strategies. Next. Uh, our service process definitely it is something that first we do the requirement analysis, then we do the development, then sorry, first we do the requirement analysis, then project management and quality assurance and software development, and then at the end of everything, support and the maintenance. Support and maintenance is very important for every customer because so many companies do the development, do the requirement analysis, but uh, at the end of the delivery, they don't focus on the support and the maintenance, but we are also providing the supports so that they can grow and at the same time they keep enhancing the product they keep adding the new features and in that way we generate more work from the same existing customer next now i will uh, ask manish to cover the technology from a uh, technology uh, roadmap from here manish over to you All right. Okay. I think I'm audible. Am I clear? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you, Ratan, and good afternoon, everyone. 
Uh, so, like Ratan mentioned, right, uh, this year we have been focusing very strongly on to AAML, right? We have even launched a center of excellence. Uh, so, keeping that in mind, right, uh, uh, AI and ML has been one of our biggest, I would say, growth drivers. Uh, the other one being big data. So AIML and big data, these have been our prime focus areas for the last year. Uh, the other uh, important areas uh, like Salesforce, where we have become a summit partner, which is the topmost certification. Uh, besides this, we have also working on DevOps, enterprise technology, and some products as well as uh, the bread and butter, which is like uh, you know, regular application development, which includes your mobile and as well as web, right? Now going, so I have, you know, when, when I say we focus on AI and ML so much, right? How does that actually uh, turn into business? So these are some case studies. We'll be focusing specifically on those which are related to AI, ML and big data. And those, these have been done for our top clients. This client uh, is one of, you know, it's, it's a US-based client, and they are one of the leading uh, uh, providers for edtech in Australia. So their product is being used across almost all the top Australian universities. And it's like a video product which, uh, through which the lecturer or the professor can share the lecture to the students online, offline. So they came to us. Uh, they were looking for uh, an automated generative AI-based solution which could help the professors in assessment, in generating exams, in assessing students, right? So we understood, because we have been already working with them for a long time, we understand their domain very well. So we suggested, you know, we will be using a open source large language model, which is the heart of generative AI, and fine tune it with the lectures that the professors are giving in the, in the university. So based on that, we have created a completely case solves fine-tuned large language model, which is deployed in the customer's premises, in their infrastructure. That model is today able to solve many use cases. For example, once the lecture is done, it understands the context of the lecture, the PDFs which have been shared, and based on them, it generates questions and answers in real time. It also is able to generate exams, which the students can then take. It is also intelligent enough that it knows which area of the lecture is more critical or more important, which has to be given more weightage. So it generates questions and assessments on those topics. With you know, uh, you know, it, it creates more questions on those topics. Right. So. The other thing that has been done over is, uh, so we, this all requires what we call as a prompt engineering. So this is where case all shines. All these technologies, uh, prompt engineering, uh, fine tuning of large language models, these are something which cannot, which we have not seen being done by a company of within our category. Going ahead. So this is another uh, very big customer. This is again a fortune. Fortune 500 telecom giant. What they were looking for? Sorry, this is for uh, this is for another customer, which is based in Germany. So they were looking for a very large, uh, you know, uh, database movement across a NoSQL database. What they have? What they have? MongoDB to a SQL database. The problem was the existing solutions which were out there. They were very slow in terms of processing, or either if you were to go for a you know, a proprietary license tool, the costs were very, very highly expensive. So they came to KSOLS, how can this be done in minimal cost, but at the same time managing the efficiency and, uh, you know, and the whole uh, process as such. So over there, we suggested that we will, we will employ NIFI as a solution. And NIFI is being open source, the cost is also, there is no licensing cost per se of NIFI. But you need real expertise to develop such a complex flow. So we had worked with them. Uh, the data was coming in different formats. It was coming at different speeds. There was certain, uh, what we call as batch as well as 
real time real time processing so we leverage kafka also over there the nifi flow was connected to this kafka cluster it was ingesting data from all that kafka transforming that into appropriate schema as per the rdbms and pushing it all across we also worked for this transformation on a framework called jolt on jolt is again not something which uh, no which typically all big companies or maybe you know which requires a lot of experience it's not something which can be done by any small company so the coming to third case study this is for a, a telecom giant fortune 500 company so they were running a uh, huge reports and what they were seeing is that their existing infrastructure was slowly becoming uh, you know it was taking a lot of time to generate those reports so they wanted a solution which could process billions and millions of records and give them reports within few fraction of seconds a lot of research was done over there and after all of that we suggested that what we will do for you is we will leverage a technology called apache druid now this is again a big data technology very high end niche technology i would say we from case so from case all we had people who were like you know druid architects druid developers senior etl developers they understood the entire process and then they helped deploy that druid infrastructure uh, within their premises they helped them develop that entire druid based pipeline and as a result of all of this finally the entire report what was taking earlier i would you know what i recall was around 30 to 40 minutes this was being generated within few seconds now this in, this entire pipeline is right now live and is working perfectly fine the client is also very happy and based on this they have you know the project size itself has grown they have involved into other technologies also right so in short what what i would just like to summarize is at case alls when we are working on ai ml we are working on big data right we are working on things which which are like let's say for example if you talk about generative ai there is something which come, come called as rag now rag is something rag framework is something which needs a lot of engineering as well as experience to build a solution based on that right and if you talk about only ml or artificial intelligence model development is just one part but building that model and deploying that model so that it actually serves the purpose monitoring of that model getting feedback of that model back into it so that it becomes efficient and accurate over the time that also requires a lot of engineering and a lot of i would say knowledge that is where kesol excels and this uh, this has always been our biggest strength due to which many clients have come to us and they have stayed with us and in fact given more work to us related to these technologies so uh, coming to us so what we have also been doing last year is we have been trying to participate in lot of domestic as well as international events the leftmost slide that you see the leftmost picture that you see is we participated in a very prestigious international event held at dubai which was called global ai show it is one of the biggest events for ai we were the platinum sponsor over there i personally had a keynote session over there you can see our team also interacting with lot of clients over there and we, it generated a lot of interest we have got very good leads from over there the second we also participated at the predictive analytics summit which was held in mumbai this year and again we were one of the keynote speakers over there the event gave us very good uh, sort of uh, uh, a lot of clients we got all we got a lot of leads from that events and the third one that you see is uh, it was this was an udu event which was held at belgium now udu like that an earlier mentioned right it's one of a bigger scene that we have the uh, the udu is based, the udu itself the founders are based in belgium and this event was a very prestigious event for them we were one of the top uh, i would say speakers over there 
and over here you can see ratan himself giving a speech over there so in an all in all we have been trying to sort of share our knowledge as well as uh, our uh, you know uh, uh, do some marketing of kesol's brand in domestic as well as international events all right okay so now i'll hand it over to umang okay thank you manish good day and very warm welcome to all of you uh, thanks a lot for taking time to join us today ratan has already walked us through the market outlook and manish has given us the insights on technological growth map so now let me quickly walk through the financial performance for the quarter ended march 24 followed by annual performance and some financial insights next Okay, so our consolidated revenue for the quarter to date would be thirty point four five CR, reflecting quarter on quarter growth of seven percent and year on year growth of thirty four percent. Profit after tax for the quarter to date nine point four zero CR, reflecting quarter on quarter growth of five percent and year on year growth of twenty eight percent. Our EBITDA margin is to date forty two point five percent for Q four FY twenty four as compared to forty point eight percent for Q four FY twenty three. Next. we yeah, have already covered ebitda sales so we can move to next slide okay so now coming to annual performance so i am pleased to share that kesols has reported a resilient performance and we have crossed the milestone and we delivered a revenue of 108.64 crores for fy 23 24 giving us a growth of 39% on a year on year basis as compared to fy 23 and profit after tax to date 34.15 crores giving us a growth of 38% on year on year basis as compared to fy 22 23 so in uh, you can see we shown a tremendous 10x growth in revenue in last 5 years and 50x growth in profit after tax in last 5 year we shows our commitment to deliver in profitable growth consistently next okay so in continuation to our growth um, we have been continuing to pay heavy dividend Uh, with around 68% of dividend payout in FY 23-24, and uh, if you imagine this, a shareholder who initially invested rupees one lakh twenty thousand in our IPO for 200 shares, now boosts a staggering 9,600 shares thanks to bonus adjustments. And since listing, their total return has skyrocketed to close to 9,400 percentage, uh, means 94 times. So that's an incredible journey from an initial investment of one lakh twenty thousand. to a booking rupees 1 crore 12 lakhs uh, encompassing both stock appreciation and dividends and in fy 23 24 alone uh, this fortunate investor have pocketed a dividend of rupees 9.19.50 per share outshining the original adjusted issue price of rupees 12.50 per share mm, okay and uh, as you can see around 74% of our free cash flow has been paid as dividend during the year and being a debt free company we have been consistently delivering superior return ratios that is return on equity is around 148 150% and return on capital employed is close to 200% so in terms of geographical footprint 81% of our revenue comes from overseas customers out of which North America remains our largest overseas geography with 86%, followed by 9% from Europe and rest 5% from rest of the world. And 19% of our total revenue comes from domestic clients. Uh, last year it was 23%. So this shows our uh, more focus to overseas customers. So now coming to revenue mix by from technology perspective. so open source technology and salesforce continue to lead with each generating more than around 20% of our total revenue uh, followed by odo which is 18% and aiml big data more than 10% and uh, rest for mobile apps and devops and automation and qa and you can see uh, we are a service based company so 97.5% of our total revenue comes from developing and consulting services now coming to revenue mix by industries uh, that is our customers domain so you can see we provide our services across diversified industries as displayed here displayed here on the screen 
with technology continue to remain largest segment followed by services telecom marketing retail edutech uh, bfsi etc so this next okay so with this uh, i will now pass the call to operator to open the floor for questions thank you for your patience and continued interest in case also thank you thank you management team uh any anyone who wishes to ask a question is the option of raise hand we'll take our first question from webhav temani webhav you can go ahead hi uh, am i audible yes yes yeah, hi uh, so how much growth do you see coming from salesforce udo red hat etc in future and i asked this because you're saying you're not focusing on ai ml and it contributes around 11% of your sales But your growth up till now in last four years is not driven by AML. So why is this insistence on AML also? Manish, can you answer this? Yes. Okay. So first and foremost, why this growth on AML? Right. So we realize that the future cannot be only just Salesforce and Udo. We are we we are not leaving Udo and Salesforce by the way. we for them also but what we realize that big billing big projects all those will be coming from aml that is the future for sure and if you know we cannot be left behind on that the comparison if you look at it maybe one year if you look at it two years three years back aml was very small part of it compared to that today it is 11% that two of the you know when we are at 100 cr so the pie itself has become you know big as well as the ai part itself also has become very big so that is the reason that aml has been one of our prime areas secondly we will still continue to work on udo as well as salesforce we will not let them sort of, they have been doing good we still have big teams we have got big projects working on udo as well as salesforce but we do not see that they will be able to give us that margin that aml can give okay and on the same lines uh, uh, do you funnel your leads uh, through cold calling like that's the prominent mode or is it more about your clients giving good feedback to other clients and that's how you get uh, more traction so we so client retention has been one of our very big fortes you can see that in the numbers also mm-hmm. right so first and foremost what we do is let's say for some of these clients right what what you were seeing right uh, they were working with us let's say on udo they re- then once we did good with udo then you they realize okay you know what else can we offer so we upscale them the other technology so in a way udo salesforce also help me drive related products related projects with that same client it's not that a client will be working only on salesforce right it's the fortune 500 company they may be having salesforce only as just one part but they will also be having let's say big data all other things related to them right so one is that we get repeat business from the same client mm-hmm. second is we have been participating you know in these events also right that i just mentioned earlier right some of those leads have been coming from there also because over there we actually get to meet some of the person or let's say person lead face to face it gives very clear indication and very good impression if we can show to them right now then and there itself our capabilities and we can you know we have done live pocs over there itself live demos so that has been very helpful for us and thirdly we do have uh, you know uh, the word of the mouth which flows because of you know our existing clients okay and just one last question uh do we have a purely service based model where we get the technological requirements and then we de- deploy our service team or do we also do some products and uh, uh, solutions and the reason i'm asking this is because uh would this business linearly scale with employee base let's say you have 500 employees now and you have touched 100 crores top line if you have to grow to 500 crores top line does that mean you need 4x or 5x more employees or are we looking at products solutions okay. technology generators well uh manish i'm taking care from okay so webo first of all um, manis has covered that how we are getting the business but on a lighter mode it is a secret okay i don't think ki hame sab kuch sahi sahi bata dena chahiye ki kaise business aata hai theek but anyway uh, manis has covered 
and I have explained that there are several ways organic and inorganic. Second thing that uh, we are working in the niche technology so customers are coming automatically means we do not need to put lots of effort as we do for other technologies for example uh, open source okay e-commerce okay for 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 do, these kind of technologies you need to do a lot of efforts cold calling and mm-hmm. uh, email campaign and, uh, and google adwords and all these things but but for the big data ai ml if you are able to show uh, your uh, capabilities properly on uh, on your internet on the internet, on the on your website, so, so, so customers will automatically uh, contact you, and these things are happening with us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. This is the next question from Richa Agarwal, which I can go ahead to. Uh, sir, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, so my query was, uh, if you have to compare yourself with, you know, in terms of scale or in terms of capabilities within Indian industry companies that you compare yourself with or benchmark yourself, benchmark yourself against, what would be those names in the listed space? See, again, see, uh, there are so many companies who are doing uh, well, okay, and definitely uh it is a tough answer taking the name okay again it is it is something that i'm giving uh i'm uh, undirectly or indirectly i'm uh, giving them a high priorities or importance okay so i would not take any name but definitely there are good companies who are a billion dollar companies uh, i can say that they are i i would like to do something like them Okay, so my next question was that what is it that is uh, allowing us, you know, this kind of growth along with the margins, which is, you know, kind of industry beating, especially in the recent times when Mm -hmm. IT industry has suffered some kind of setback because of the U.S. budget constraints or limited spending on tech. If you could help me with that differentiation that you bring to the table. Sure. First thing is that we are working on the new technology. Second thing is that the lean cost structure. We have a, a very lean cost structure. Means the uh, costing of the uh, the development is low as compared to those companies. So it's still uh, there are these companies are struggling to get the business. But for us, most of the companies who are uh, most of the companies are outsourcing uh, to us because of this lean ca- cost structure. And this is not something with us only. This is something with all the small cap companies. Okay, if, if in the market you will see that small uh, small cap companies are doing good as compared to large cap companies. Okay, and this is just because of this lean cost structure. So for a small cap in industries, costing is low as compared to product product mis, uh, uh, development cost is low as compared to uh, large mar- uh, cap uh, uh, large cap. Okay. So it because of these things, uh, small cap is growing fast. So, so my understanding is that uh, uh, you know it's more a cost orientation or focus on cost rather than you know the kind of projects you take. It's not that you are saying no to any kind of commoditized uh, uh, you know the products or demands uh, that lead to lower billing, but uh, more of cost uh, focus that is actually yes. leading to. Cost is one factor. And then I said that the technology, okay, I don't say that the billing is uh, the factor, okay, means we are not uh, very much compromising with the billing, but definitely our billing is lower as compared to those companies. But those companies have uh, so many other formalities which they do before starting the project, okay. So that's why their cost is high as compared to us. Here we directly jump into the project. We directly start the requirement analysis. Okay. So you can say that uh, response time is very uh, quick here. Response is very quick here. Okay. So that is the ma- major reason for the growth. Uh, and sir, what was the attrition rate uh, for the year and the quarter? Uh, see numbers I can uh, uh, I do not remember but one thing I can say that it is attrition is, is lower as compared to last year means okay no. 
and uh, so if you could also share you know how many fortune 500 clients we are working with i mean not the names but you know uh, what percentage of revenue would be coming from fortune 500 clients so, like something on the profile of the clients how big they are see it is continuously growing i one thing second thing that i have started uh, working with the fortune 500 uh, client last year means uh, at the starting of this year and that time uh, assignment was very small but right now very huge team is working and they have indicated a signal that we are they are going to increase the amount of the work okay. and other companies are also a billion dollar companies Definitely, we have signed the NDA. They are not very much interested to disclose the name, but uh, most of the companies are very reputed company. Okay, okay. I'll join back the queue. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Abhishek Singhal. Abhishek, you can go ahead, please. Hello, I'm audible, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for giving for me opportunity, and congratulations on good set of number. Sir, my question regarding currently we are at a CMI, CMMI level 3. So from level 3 to level from when we planning to reach? Okay. So uh, recently, just one week before, we have uh, closed all the formalities to renew the license CMI level 3. And we have requested uh, uh, to them that how we can get the CMI level 5. They said that it will... It is not uh, something like semi level three. For semi level three, we need to prepare for semi. Uh, we need to. It it takes two months for all the prepare, prepare, uh, preparation. But for semi semi level five, it will take uh, at least one one year, and range can be one to one uh, one and a half year. Okay. So only okay. thing is that what uh, what is distracting me. To get, or uh, what, 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 what you can say that is stopping me to get semi level five because most of the management, including me, Manish, all the technical project managers, is, they, they spend a lot of time to, uh, prepare all these documents and, and in that case, it will affect, uh, the business. Okay. So I'm trying to find a, a way where I can go for the semi level five, uh, without, uh, much affecting the cost much affecting the business. So in FY25, we reach, we reach at level 4. See, see uh, level 4, I don't think exists. Semi level 3, two, you will have to jump semi level 5. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. In next one year, we reach at level 5. No, uh, again, I say that. See, first of all, company is semi level 3 or semi level 5. It does not impact on the business. It, it, it does not impact the business. For example, Pune based one company, billion dollar company, was CMI level three for so many years. Okay. And I think still they are CMI level three. Okay. So CMI level three and CMI level five, it is not something that it will create a, a way of to get a huge business, but definitely we, it is a kind of a pride. Okay, that we are jumping from semi level three to semi level five, and definitely I would like to get that, but in near future. Okay, and second question: uh, whether we can make our own marketing marketing team in instead of Odoo or Salesforce, and continuation continuation on that. When we able to develop such marketing team, forecasting your mind, if we reach this target, then we develop our team. See, we ha I think uh, see. I think we have already marketing team, okay, and it is around 17 to 18 people uh, marketing team, and they are working very hard to get the business, okay. So I think we have already marketing team. Without marketing team, how we can support the customer, how we can get the business, and even we get the business, how we can uh, start the discussion. There should be someone who will uh, uh, manage the new customer as well as who will uh, take care of the existing customers. So we have already team, support team and marketing team. So going forward, uh, business from Salesforce and uh, Odoo uh, range between 40 to 50 percent or come down in future? See, I cannot uh, give you the numbers, but definitely uh, 
परसेंटेज आई कैन कैन नॉट गिव यू द परसेंटेज ओके बट डेफिनेटली नंबर विल इंक्रीज फॉर द सेल्स फोर्स एज वेल एज फॉर द ओडो ओके एंड सर लास्ट क्वेश्चन वेन बी वेन एंड कंज्यूमर कम्स विथ हस फॉर सेल्स फोर्स एंड ओडो प्लेटफॉर्म वॉट इज रेवेन्यू शेयरिंग बिटवीन हस एंड ओडो see almost i think more than 90% uh, goes to us okay because we uh, there are so uh, there are two ways to develop a uh, uh, erp implementation one is the community based and one is the uh, enterprise okay so we mostly go for the community because customers most of the time uh, want uh, too much customization and if they will go for the enterprise then customization is uh, not possible and even if we will do it will be very costly so again licensing cost and server cost so most of the time customer go for the community okay so in the, when we go for the community everything comes to us okay thank you so much sir thank you we take the next question from dheeraj dave all those who wish to ask a question may use the option of raise hand dheeraj you can go at least in the meanwhile i have a question on chat sir how much of the 500 staff are overseas are any of them developers this is a question from abel amon okay so see basically we do not have any staff in overseas and i don't think that we will have a, a overseas staff in one next one year because uh, in overseas cost uh, they are trying to reduce the cost continuously they have they are facing the costing problem so that's why outsourcing is getting increased yes one thing i can see that there's a, a, a progress in case of in last 3 months what we have done we have sent uh, 3 to 4 people uh, one uh, one is in us for two weeks one is for uh, uh, maldives for two weeks and one is going for another country siberia okay uh, i think one or two i am missing okay and uh, because i have not noted down this thing okay but what we have uh, observed that customers are asking people at their place for the requirement analysis for week or two week or three week and then they are sending that okay uh, now you can work from your location and for these things they are paying uh, at the same rate what they pay to their employees at their location so it is something that we have started offering to our uh, customers that we are ready to uh, visit your place and uh, if customer is good then we are ready to even pay uh, even we are ready to send our people at our cost but till now fortunately customer is paying okay uh, because of this we are getting uh, too many benefits one is that uh, customer um, acquisition is easy now because we have uh, ready uh, we have people ready with the visa as i explained in the last call that we have got visa a business visa for so many people in the us and second thing that people in our company who because uh, if you will uh, see our company uh, profile on linkedin and or whatever wherever you will see that so many people are working with us uh, since so since long year okay since so many years okay so it is kind of a, a motivation for them that they are also getting chance to uh, see other countries and it is helping us to uh, be, uh, they are uh, they are understanding the culture of the other countries also so multiple benefits i am getting but definitely in one line i do not have any plan uh, for overseas uh, team in next one year considering the current market scenario there is a further follow up question from him in the chat can you also uh, give us an idea of what will be the headcount addition likely in the next one year see as i said that the growth see it is again coming uh, it is related to the growth okay if i am assuming uh, 35% plus minus 2% growth okay then uh, i can say that uh, to maintain the 35% plus minus 2 i need to have 40% uh, head count increase from here so 500 to 700 at least 
at least 500 to 700 maybe bit that more is, than that means you'll go from 500 uh, employees to 700 employees yes okay. minimum because we'll take- see, uh, we are hiring at least 40 to 50 to 70 employees every month definitely few employees are leaving okay so if you will uh, see this run rate then it is coming around more, more at least 700 700 head count next one year uh, we'll take the next question from Pratik Gedia. Pratik, you can unmute and ask your question. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, so, um, first question uh, is in terms of geographic uh, color. Are you looking? Your voice is very slow. Pratik, can you speak up a bit? Your voice is not clear. Okay. Is this better? A bit more. Okay. Now? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I have increased the volume. No worries. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so my question is more on the geographic diversification part. So are you looking to uh, diversify in other geographies? So I see US being that big one to do that. Is there any plan to do that uh, given the program of population on the US? See, uh, we are already in US. We are in Australia. Uh, we are in uh, Germany also. We are in UK also, but definitely uh, if we are talking that uh, stabilizing a new offices there, no, that is not in my plan, but acquiring new business from other countries. Yes, we are doing continuously and we will do. Okay. We have, we have a business in Dubai last year. It was a small and la- this year it is, uh, larger as compared to last year and definitely Next year, I can see the inquiries and based on those inquiries, I can assume that it will be better than this. So. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, the other question I had was on the pricing part. Um, are you seeing any pricing challenges um, from the U.S. side? From the? On the U.S. front or from clients based out of U.S.? Mm-hmm. See, definitely pricing challenge is there because they are facing the problems. Okay. But still, since beginning, I'm saying that we are working in the latest technology, niche technology. So competition is less as compared to other technologies. If I go for the Magento, if I go for the PHP, if I go for the digital marketing, competition is very tight. Okay. For, but for the big data, for the uh, AI ML competition is less as compared to other technology. But yes, pricing is challenge. Uh, getting a, a higher uh, rates is tough. Okay, but still, it is whatever we are getting, it is good for us for now. All right. Okay. And one last question from Rand on the niche technology. Can you throw a bit more light on how and the different issues about that? Uh, more on the technical side and how is it that you are able to uh, get uh, the business apart from the cost part that you mentioned earlier, anything else that you can throw like in terms of competitiveness? Uh, Pratikji, somehow I could not hear you properly. Uh, not sure, Vinayji, uh, if you can repeat this question because Sir, his voice is very fumbled. Pratik, can I request you to put the question in chat? I'll ask on your behalf. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. In the meanwhile, we take the next question from Richa Agarwal. Richa, you can go ahead. So thanks for the opportunity again. My question is that in the recent years, you, you have increased the dividend payouts. Uh, so my question was considering that we want to, uh, you know, grow in niche technologies. And uh, this is an area that uh, keeps getting disrupted or more competition keeps coming in. Do we have any plans for acquisition? And uh, I mean, if you could just share your thoughts on, uh, uh, you know, growth, whether it come organically or do you have plans for acquisition? And if so, are you already evaluating candidates for that? Okay. So first of all, we don't have any plan for acquisition because I have seen uh, that it is very rare that any equation got successful. Okay. It is very rare. I don't say that a zero reason, but rare. Second thing that what I find the problem uh, in equation, the culture, cultural difference. Okay. If I will uh, acquire any company, which is 
uh, at the same level of the caseholds are uh, smaller than this, then the management man, managing the employees will be a very tough. Okay, because the culture will be totally different of these two organizations. So I don't want to invest my time to manage the culture. Okay, I want to grow organic, organically. I want to hire people and then I will set my expectation. I will, uh, uh, I will, uh, define the rules and I will, uh, provide them trainings so that they can fit into our culture and they can be very productive and it is very hit formula since last 12 years. So I, I don't think that I'm going to try any other formula. Uh, and sir, could you share any kind of targets or guidance, you know, based on the current demand or the pipeline that you see for the next uh, five years, if not short term? Definitely, uh, I don't have any guideline or a target for the future. But yes, everyone has a target for the future. Uh, you have target for your future. I have target for the future. I would like to maintain and I would like to grow. Everything depends on the circumstances but definitely i would like to grow i would like to do better than this and so on the margin front do you think these kind of margins would be sustainable what kind of competition are you seeing in these new technologies as well see as things are moving forward i can assume i can guess i can see that the margins are sustainable for next for the next uh, for the next few months or few, few 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 quarters for the few years but everything depends on the circumstances as i said in the beginning that our cost is structure is the lean and we are getting the demands okay and if we will not un, unnecessary if we will not uh, uh, increase the costing then definitely uh, margins are uh, i can say that margins we can manage we can manage okay if everything okay. goes well. Okay, thank you and all the best. Thank you, Richard. We'll uh, take the question from Pratik Jadia. He sent me on chat. Can you throw some more light on the competitive aspect apart from pricing part that you spoke about earlier? See, in the last con call, I said that we do not have any problem on the demand side. Okay, problem is on the supply side. Okay. Finding the right people these days are very challenge, big challenge. Okay. Uh, people are coming with the mindset that uh, they, uh, with the mind, with the different mindset as compared to the last few years. So finding the right people and finding a good talent is the huge challenge for us. Demand is not supply problem. Okay. So that's why uh, what I have observed that when we uh, uh, see you are our investor so I'm talking very honestly and openly that when we hire someone uh, having experience five years, six years in the market and we interview them then we observe that, that they have whatever they have knowledge the same knowledge we have people who have two year experience. Okay. So finding a right people or in other words I can say that supply is the challenge not the demand I don't see that any uh, problem on that side Sir, uh, we we'll take the next question from Dheeraj Dave. Dheeraj you can go ahead yeah can you hear me yes yeah so congratulations on good set of number uh, and uh, team my first question is basically can you give some indication on your dividend payout because that has been 100% two years back to 75% now and uh, in past whatever I understand from my instruction is that you were looking forward to very high dividend payout so just wanted to know do you have any kind of isn't it a right time to have a dividend policy crystallized maybe say 70% 60% whatever or so range kind of thing. Again, uh, somehow, uh, Umang, uh, yeah. we are so, able to listen this question. Yes. yes. So, Diraj, uh, currently we are paying uh, from 74% of our free cash flow as dividend. And uh, 
you can see that uh, if you compare it with the industry or other competitors in the same level, so they are not paying that much. So we have a heavy dividend policy and we are continuing with it uh, for say next uh, few quarters or few years. And uh, since we are still growing and uh, we are getting more business, so we'll plan a dividend uh, policy for that, a fixed dividend policy that you're saying. But currently as and when we grow and since we are a debt-free company, we don't uh, plan any acquisitions, we are growing organically. So we'll continue this. Okay. Thanks a lot. And uh, Ratan, just one more suggestion. In fact, I have done study of many companies, companies almost 500 companies in IPO. And I can say probably Kesol would be one which had quickest to give return that 12 rupees 50 paisa as a dividend. You should look at Limca book of record to get yourself a register on that one. I'm not sure whether it's a Guinness book, but uh, 12 rupees 50 paisa, I think you within 16 or 18 months, you have paid back that by way of dividend. So I must congratulate management and team for that. And probably you may consider uh, if Thank you, you want data I can provide. If if you need any data including Colgate, including whatever since inception, ITC, Britannia, none of the company has given that kind of it. So Thank you, Dhiraj. You made my day. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thanks, Dhiraj. We take the next question from Aman Agarwal. Aman, you can go ahead, please. Hello. Um, I Ratan sir. I am Aman. I Manish sir. Uh, I am first saying uh, congratulations, close to you to cross 100 CR mark. It's it's very important in life when we go with this journey. And uh, first of all, you have uh, there's a stellar performance by your company. It should be appreciable by the market. I love. Uh, it is really very good. Uh, I have only one question with you. Uh, as company now recently got the new Dubai client also, as you're telling in your sheet, and you are working on big data technology work as you started. Uh, I think uh, as you are present and you are growing as much faster, uh, you may get a good opportunities ahead also. So like these kind of companies are also getting like this net net web technologies and data technologies they were partnering with NVIDIA and all this new technology and both. Uh, data centers. So, do you have any plans? Because you are also now started to working, but uh, big data technologies and all. Manish, you can answer on this. So, if I correct, right, you were asking about we got Dubai, uh, you know, these leads, right, and then we have got working this beta, right. So, what was the what was that related to data center that you said? Nvidia. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, these companies are partnering with the Nvidia now. Many of the companies. So, or, or any other uh, AMD chips and all to manage their data, giving the server data because they are, they need a very big data servers for a big data correct. analysis or big correct, data analysis. Correct, correct. Yeah. Okay, okay. So see, we, so, you know, when you talk about, you know, all these data versions, right, that's a very, uh, you know, separate skill set. You know, we, we are very focused on what we want to do, right? We don't want to, you know, go everywhere and then not achieve anything. Rather than what we will do is yeah. we will focus on some few things and do, you know, excellent work at that. Once that is delivered, then we can think about, okay, you know, probably we can now look at, you know, something else, something else, something else, right? When you talk about the data, right, NVD and all these things, right? So this is primarily infrastructure business. We do not want to get into, you know, setting up of, uh, you know, selling of hardware. We are more onto software side. We are not into the hardware side, number one, right? For these hardware and all those things, right, what we do is we, we rely on our partners, for example, Red Hat. They will do that, you know, they help us on those things, right? If there is a data was set up, right? These Red Hat, you know, AWS, these guys can help us, you know, what needs to be done from the point of servers and hardware specifically, right? We will, if required, if there's a project, right, we, you know, that we want to get into, probably we'll get into a partnership with one of these, these giants, right? Maybe Dell, maybe, you know, other HP, right? But we do not want to focus specifically on hardware right now. Our focus, our forte is software. Within software also, we know exactly where we want to focus on to. Like I said, AIML, big data, all those things, right? So let us focus on that. We, you know, we want to, we are seeing a lot of things already are there, which we are not yet to fulfill. So let, so our focus is, let's get that plate cleaned up. Then we'll look at something else. That's, that's nice. That's to be a focus, that's nice. One. Yeah. And we and have, we I, I have already explained uh, in the call that, uh, 
That's why we are doing the partnership with the Red Hat and we are doing the event and all. They will take care about the hardware. We will take care about the software. Yeah, uh, I think their biggest client is General Electronics. Uh, what they mostly uh, been known for. Uh, and yeah, uh, as your performance wise, you are very good. So uh, you should come in you know, Fortune 100 companies of India if it is in the growth purpose. If there is any any kind of uh, uh, strategies they are if they are known. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. For all this thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Saman. We'll take two more questions from the chat. One is from Mr. S. Das. Are you seeing any obstacles in future that can hamper the growth of the company? <laughs> Anil, kya bolu iska answer? To mujhe lagta hai corona se bhot dar lagta hai. Agar aisa hua, kuch to fir alag baat hai. Otherwise, I don't think that anything will go wrong. And uh, a question from Weber Temani. Sorry for uh, sorry for this uh, answer, but I don't think that anything is going in the anything will hamper the business if anything like this corona or any world war or anything which is going all around the world if if it happens then definitely it will hamper the business but i don't see that any reason i can say that it will hamper the business and uh, a question from web of temani what is the employee attrition rate see it is lower than the last year but accurate rate uh, Uman can give you here. It's in the range of around nineteen percent. So, since there are no further questions, uh, I would invite you to give us a closing comment. So, see, uh, thank you for arranging this call. Uh, I tried my best to give answer uh, to all the investors, and thank you to all the investors. and uh, thank you for showing trust on us i we will try uh, our best to maintain your uh, trust and we will do uh, our best thank you vinay thank you all the investors thank you sir on behalf of kesos we thank you all for participating on this call we end the call here with you may disconnect now thank you thank you the recording has stopped